Okay, it's that time of year again. The Premier League season is upon us. It starts in just a few days' time. So why don't we make the kind of predictions we can look back on in 10 months' time and make ourselves feel really stupid about our football knowledge? Listen, there's always a surprise in there. Um, but everyone's doing these videos. You've probably seen 10. You've maybe seen 20 of them. But what's one more, right? Eh? I'm going to keep these short. I'm just going to give a line on each team. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to cough my way through it because I've somehow managed to get ill in the middle of summer. Only I can find a way to do that. Uh, let's do it. Let's make our Premier predictions. I'm going to be predicting where every team is actually going to finish in a particular position. I, I, I kind of grouped them last year. If you did watch it last year, thank you for supporting the channel for over a whole year. I really appreciate it. What I did was I basically went, you know, the top four and then, then other European places or whatever. The reason I'm not doing that this year is I thought it'd be more fun to actually pre predict a particular position. It was actually a suggestion from someone in the comment section of last year's video to basically predict every position and then count how many places I'm off for each place. It's a point, tally the points, obviously the higher the worst. Um, and it'd be good to then actually compare them year by year. See if my football knowledge is getting any better. So that's what I'm going to start to do. Let's go through it. Let's go through the various clubs and where I think they'll finish, starting bottom to top, because who doesn't want to hear a deluded fan, Arsenal fan at the end of a video explain why they are going to be title winners. That was a spoiler. Let's go into <coughs> the relegation battle. Last place, Sheffield United. Why? I was going to go Luton, and then I heard a Sheffield United fan on the overlap completely swing my mind. Um, they're not ready for the Premier League. Sander Burge could be on his way. He's obviously a very good player. And I, I just think they uh, maybe... <sighs> They had financial issues. I don't think they've been able to prep in the way they would have wanted to to get ready for this campaign. I've got them 20th. It could have been Luton, but I'm giving them 19th. Um, they signed Ross Barkley on a free transfer. I can't pretend to know enough about Luton and Sheffield United, um, but I'm just not sure from the little I do know and what I have heard, bits of research here and there, that they are going to really have enough <coughs> to stay up. But what a story that Luton have made to the Premier League, and I hope they have a really, really good campaign. I genuinely do. Now, who's joining them? Because I thought I was being kind of a bit clever and sort of different going for Wolves, you know, about a week ago when these conversations started, I thought, here we go, you know, let's go for Wolves, maybe another Leicester, a really good squad of players or what was a really good squad of players, you know, doing the unthinkable and going down with the kind of players they have. And actually, everyone's coming for Wolves. So I think I want to be a little bit different. I think I'm going to go away from that. Because when I do think about it, Gary O'Neill has just been appointed. I think he's going to have enough just to kind of keep them up. Um, he did the same for Bournemouth, and I think he'll do the same for Wolves. So I actually think Nottingham Forest is going to go down. I think Steve Cooper's a better manager than Gary O'Neill, but I'm not sure, sure he has the same players. Yes, it was a fortress for them. You know, their home ground and clubs were struggling when they were travelling there. I just don't think they're going to have enough in this second campaign. I liken it, <coughs> I know they didn't do as well as Sheffield United in their first campaign under Chris Wilder, but I kind of liken it to that where they were kind of difficult to beat when you did travel there and they kind of picked enough points to stay up. Well, actually, they had a very good first campaign in the Premier League, Sheffield United, but then it just kind of really fell away in the second campaign. I think that'll be the same for Nottingham Forest, but I do think Steve Cooper is a very good manager and I hope he does well. So they're getting my 18th spot and Wolves are going to get my 17th spot. Crystal Palace 16th for me. Um, I'll be honest, yes, they've lost Zaha and they still have some very talented players. I just think the Roy Hodgson bubble, I do think it was a bubble. I do think it was a manager bounce. I'm not sure that, I basically, I basically, I think Patrick Vieira would have got the same results. Is that bad of me to say? I do. I just think Patrick Vieira ultimately got through the really tough bit. And as he got to the bit where he could pick up points, they just chucked Roy Hodgson in there. I thought that was really harsh on Patrick Vieira. I like Palace, but I just think ultimately they'll be fine. They'll stay up. But I do think they'll fall away and not be as competitive. Although I should probably be careful about what I've just said about Forest and Palace because they're Arsenal's opening two games of the season. So I could look very stupid in a couple of weeks' time. Um, <coughs> who else is there? In 15th place, I'm going for Fulham. Yes, they finished 10th. Yes, I like Marco Silva a lot. Uh, I just think, again, last year was a little bit of a surprise. I think they were kind of seen as the club that would easily go down. They show a lot more fight and different sort of elements of their game. I like Fulham. Um, second half of the season, they weren't as good as maybe the first half. Um, but I just think they're going to come down a little bit. I, look, I must say, though, that a lot of this is also based on some of the clubs I'm going to mention later and why I think they will occupy the higher spots. I mean, the funny thing is, you can finish 14th in the Premier League and still be a very decent very decent team, even though it feels like you're nearer the relegation zone than perhaps the spots on the table you want to be. Um, let's now talk a little bit about uh, 14th place. I'll go for Everton. I'll go for Everton because I just think they signed Dan Juma. They apparently want Nyonto. 
I like those signings. I think those are kind of good signings. So you can make a front three of like Calvert Lewin leading the line with Nyonto, McNeil, Dan Juma. That's that feels like enough firepower to me. I think Sean Dyche will get plenty out of that front three. And then you've got a pretty robust set of midfield options. And then I think whoever he's got at the back, he'll be, he'll be able to get like an organised tune out of them and make them somewhat difficult to beat. I also agree with Jamie Carragher on the overlap who said that Everton will sort of win games 1-0 but lose them 2-1 and yeah I can kind of see that and that for me will give them enough just to kind of float away from the relegation battle. So I think they'll be okay. I sort of think the same for West Ham and I know people might think West Ham but David Moyes it just feels like he's in trouble all the time, doesn't he? Uh, even though he's just won a European trophy with him. And they've lost Declan Rice to Arsenal. And Lucas Paqueta could be out on his way. I weirdly think West Ham... Listen, finishing 13th is not a good campaign. Nor is finishing 14th for Everton. Let's make that very clear. But I don't think they'll be in that relegation scrap. The reason I think West Ham will be okay is... I weirdly think losing Rice and Paqueta... And Skamaka apparently is on his way or has left as well. I think that might give West Ham and David Moyes... Almost more freedom to be a little bit more what Moyes, I think, wants to be, which is robust, counter-attacking, hard work, good on set pieces. And I think when they had these other players, there was a little bit of a pressure to... I mean, Mikel Antonio has literally spoken about this. Um, I think he was on Filthy Fellas, and he literally said, look, you know, we had to adapt. We had Skamaka, we wanted to play his new way. And then as we got in trouble, we realised we weren't clicking like we wanted to. We had to revert to type. And I think Moyes will revert to type for most of this season. Wing backs, back three, all that, and largely be okay. So, yeah, especially this time Harry Maguire, and they've got Edson Alvarez, and James Ward Prowse could be coming in, and they're looking at McTominay. I, I actually think West Ham will be fine. Not scintillating, not brilliant to watch, but I think they'll be fine. And 13th is about where I put them. Burnley are a lot, are a lot of people's surprise package. I put them 12th. Um, yeah, I think they'll play good football. I think they'll score a lot of goals. I think they'll be very open. So, I think this idea that they're going to be such a surprise package that they finish like. 7th, 8th, ninth, or just in the top 10. I don't quite go that far with it, but I do think they will comfortably finish away from the relegation zone. So I've got them 12. Brentford 11th because I think without Tony and Raya, that's a sort of a really big outlet for them, but they've got very good players. And crucially, they have a very, very, very good manager. I rate Thomas Frank massively. So I think they'll be okay and finish 11th. So one club, <coughs> I couldn't even say so there. Only, only I can get ill in summer. Right, 10th place. Bournemouth, and you're probably hearing that name and going, oh yeah, why were they not further down? I think Bournemouth are going to be okay. They invested a bit in January, and I think they're continuing to invest. I think Max Aaron is the latest to come through. They were going to get Castro Villi, that Italian midfielder. They've moved on from him, but there's other options as well. I think they're going to be fine. Dominic Solanke led the line really well for them. Um, I think they play good football, but they can be sort of stern and robust to beat as well. Um, I think the manager they brought in, Iraola, have I said that right? Um, let me have a little Bournemouth manager. Um, a lot of people, yes, yes, Andoni Iraola. Um, a lot of managers and people who have followed his work have said he's a very, very good player, that he, a player, very good manager, that he coaches a very good press, that he is a modern progressive manager, and I think they've invested quite a bit, and I think Bournemouth actually showed that there's quite a bit about that squad towards the end of last season, to the point where they really pulled away from the relegation zone early on. Everyone had them as a shoe in to go down around February, and actually they stayed clear of all of it. So fair play to Bournemouth. I think if this manager is what people are saying he is, who people are saying he is, I think they might be the surprise package this season, and I'm going to have them 10th. Ninth, this is weirdly controversial because if I told you a year ago that I was predicting Villa to finish ninth for the next season, that might have even sounded controversial the other way. Like, why do you think Gerard would possibly get Villa to ninth? It's Una Emery now. He ended things brilliantly to the point where he got them into the Europa Conference League. But here's my thing with Villa. I rate Una Emery massively <coughs> to the point where I actually defend his first season at Arsenal. And I did it back then. It's not just hindsight. I said his first season was better than people gave him credit for. I like him. I think he's a very good manager. But I do think when he gets into these European competitions, as we saw with Villarreal, I don't think he ever really got close to really breaking into the top four, top six or whatever. Mate, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. You know, I've only, only kind of followed from a distance his time at Villarreal. But 
He's the kind of manager who picks up a lot of draws, kind of makes them hard to beat, but maybe doesn't always get the win. And then there's European fo football to focus on. And I actually think while everyone's expecting Villa to kick on, having signed Tielemans, Pau Torres, Moussa Diaby, I actually think they'll plateau a little bit and still be a good side. But I think there'll be a lot of focus on getting a European trophy. And I think while they may be hanging around the top six, top seven for a lot of the season, I do think they'll just fall away. Remember, these are season predictions. We could get to February and... I Unless they're like in the top four, I'm not sure I'm going to change my mind much about this. I do think they'll start to fall away. And like I said, Emery's the kind of manager that picks up a lot of draws, is kind of always focusing on the opposition. I keep referring to the overlap in this video, but the Villa fan who was there said, you know, we've never seen a manager tinker with so many different formations and tactics and systems. I, I get that. I was like that when he was at Arsenal. And I know it's different clubs and all that, different expectations. But I thought to myself, wow, look how he always changes for the opposition. Look how we always mixing things up and actually realise that sometimes you need a degree of stability and Emery kind of prefers to always prep for the opposition. So I just think ultimately they're going to finish ninth. I've done a lot of talking on there, so I'd love to know your thoughts on them. But listen, finishing ninth and like winning the Conference League is an unbelievable campaign anyway. So I think they, and I think they will win the Conference League. Okay, so now we're into the top eight. We're talking Europe here, sixth, seventh and eighth. Eighth for me is going to be Brighton. I don't think you can lose McAllister and it's looking like Caicedo as well um, and be the same team. But I think De Zerbi is a fantastic coach and they have some, some really good players. Obviously, a lot of this depends on if Caicedo actually goes, if Kudus actually comes um, and a lot of different things. But ultimately, I think they'll be fine and they'll play very good football, but they won't quite be as good as last year. But I like Brighton a lot. Uh, then I've got Chelsea finish seventh. And actually, I want to stress that let me also add here that Tottenham are going to finish sixth and sort of talk about this run for European football. Tottenham and Chelsea didn't finish in the Europa League places last year. In fact, they both finished outside of Europe. So that in itself is an improvement. Um, but what I would say about the two, with Tottenham finishing sixth, Chelsea finishing seventh, I actually think they're going to come on leaps and bounds this season. I just think that from first to sixth, seventh is going to be a lot closer than it was last year. I don't think City are going to run away with it. I'm actually predicting Arsenal to win the league. I don't think they're going to run away with it. I think things will be a little bit more condensed. And I think Andrew Postacoglu and Pochettino are both really good appointments. And I look at their squads and I think they're suited to the manager they've got. And I think they're going to score goals. And I think they might be frail at the back and concede quite a bit. But largely, I'm kind of backing both teams to do well, just not quite well enough. I was flirting with the idea of one of them nicking Champions League. We've got to remember that Champions League is fifth place this year. Fifth and above will get a spot in the Champions League. I've given that to Man United. I think they're going to plateau and actually fall off a little bit on last season because I don't personally believe massively in Ten Hag and this transitional midfield of Mount, Bruno, Casemiro. It feels imbalanced to me. Um, Hojlund, who they brought in as their kind of answer up front for 60, 70 million, whatever. He's not able to start a lot of the season because of a back problem. He doesn't have the best goal scoring record as it is. Unbelievable talent, don't get me wrong. But yeah, I'm just sort of curious as to how that's going to work. Um, and yeah, I just... You know, they conceded a lot of goals last year on the end of some batterings. I'm not sure they've done too much to address that. But I think Ten Hag's a very good manager. I think he'll have another good cup run. He'll probably do quite well in the Champions League. And I think he'll get them back into the top four slash top five. Um, but I'm, I, I do think there'll be a slight drop off. Don't hate me, Man United fans. This reminds me of when Man United fans signed Ronaldo and they had Arsenal finishing outside the Champions League or doing badly. And then the kind of things flipped. I really hope history doesn't repeat itself the other way. So I've gone for Newcastle fourth. I just think um, they've gone for sensible signings that fit with the way they want to play football. And I think uh, Eddie Howe will have to balance the Champions League, but will ultimately kind of get them ticking enough to you know, cement another Champions League place next year. <coughs> um, apologies for the cough. Uh, Liverpool to finish third. I think they're just going to score their way to third. I actually think they'll still concede a lot of goals and have some pretty ugly moments throughout the season. But I do think Zabos and McAllister are very good signings. They're going to have Diaz fit for most of the season. Gakpo is in for another year now. They've tweaked with the system last year and that made them a better team. Still, I think a lot to do. They need to get the holding midfielder. I do believe the holding midfielder, whether it be Lavia or whoever it is, will come in. And I think while they'll concede a lot of goals, I think they're going to score. It wouldn't surprise me if they scored the most goals next season. I genuinely think they have that much firepower. So I think they'll score their way to third place. And then it comes to the winners and second place. So I went for City second and Arsenal first. We may as well talk about it all in one go. And I ruined it earlier in the video that I've gone for Arsenal first. But the reason I've gone for this is my thing with Man City is They've lost, and I know we say it every year, and everyone keeps saying, we say it every year, we can't keep thinking that City are going to drop off. I just believe that Gundogan is massive for them. Riyad Mahrez is massive for them. And how do you, 
how do you keep playing like to that level year after year? It just has to drop off. It just has to, surely. I, and this is partly me being hopeful. You know, four years in a row has never been done before. They've won the treble. They've hit the pinnacle now. I guess going unbeaten is the next thing. Um, but I just think there will be a slight drop off. They've got things like the Club World Cup that might kind of disrupt that middle of the campaign. But more, more importantly, and this is now me talking about the win as Arsenal for me, I actually think Arsenal have added the kind of depth to the squad they needed, have added the exact quality they needed in that they got Rice's dynamism in midfield where Xhaka did very well but he wasn't as dynamic. Timber is brilliant cover for Zinchenko, for Ben White and for Saliba where we probably lacked that before. And then Havertz is just a different quantity and a different option up top or in attacking areas and now Arsenal start to look a little bit unpredictable. Trossard's there for a whole season, he looked brilliant in pre-season and then you start thinking okay now we're going into you know, games not knowing who's going to start for Arsenal, that's a great problem. I think Arsenal have levelled up and I think they've levelled up enough for City to drop a bit where I think they have the window and Arsenal to now catch them. I also think they'll have learned from last season's, you know, problems. They've addressed it in the market. I think mentally they'll have learned from it now. Let's not forget David Ryers coming in as well and let's see who, what, what he'll add. So yeah, I'm being hopeful. I'm being maybe a little bit delusional, but hey-ho, why not back your team now after £230 million spent on a side that finished second place and five points off top last season if you can't believe now when can you those are my predictions let me know your thoughts in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoy this video get your predictions get your 1 to 20 in the comments below i'd really like to see them and a big thank you to everyone who supported this channel i can't thank you enough do subscribe if you haven't yet because there's content coming out every monday wednesday and friday without fail and i'll see you very soon